Where are the employers of the 21st century going to find the creative workforce that they need? We would suggest that a good place to start might be the special education classroom. To this day, I cannot remember anything about third grade. I had failed spectacularly. How did I know I was a dumb kid? Because in my second year of grammar school, this stern lady walked in with a piece of paper and she read it off of four names and I was one of them. And she said, come with me. And we went and I said, where were you going? One of the kids beside me said, to the dumb class. And then the lady said, not only are you visually dyslexic, you're auditorially dyslexic, and I've never seen anybody quite as bad as you. When I had my first son, um, and my wife was trained as a school teacher before she went to medical school, and she said, something's wrong with him. Something's really abnormal. I said, no, no, <laughs> it's just the way I was. It's not, nothing. <laughs> So I came into my first English class, and a very tall teacher read what I wrote, and then he came over and he said in a voice that the entire room could hear, Mr. Levine, you haven't got a chance in hell of passing this class. But if you want to stay in for the year and bang your head against that wall, I'll help push. When I was growing up, I didn't know the word dyslexia. Um, what it was called when I was young was slow. You needed some way to describe people who, you know, in fourth grade, uh, basically hadn't really started reading yet, like me. The belief that dyslexic minds are simply trying but failing to be like other minds is really at the root of a lot of our mistaken approaches to education and employment. I learned through this kind of complicated bouncing up and down life that I did things that other people did, but I did it a different way. Dyslexic minds process many different types of information differently, but they process differently for a reason. I realized things like pH, when they showed me that, I just blanked out. So I said, these are these complex physiologic things. How the heck can I understand them? And I said, you know, by drawing pictures. A lot of us are very good at 3D spatial thinking and at seeing um, temporal patterns that other people don't see or seeing scales that other people don't see. And um, for me, that has made it easy for me to couple physics and biology in my work. Physics was so obviously um, intuitive to me that I felt like I could really just understand the answers in physics. You'd look at the problem and, oh, well, it's that, of course. The night before, I'd start doing the operation in my brain, and I'd actually see it even the incision, and I'd figure out, well, I'd better not go there, I'd better go there. So then, when the operation started, I could just sort of walk up to the table, pick up the scalpel, make the incision, and get going. The same trade-offs that lead to some of the cognitive difficulties with acquisition of basic skills also lead to a predisposition to strengths in a variety of areas. I'm interested in the physics of how organisms interact with the environment around them. And to do that, I can't just work in one field. I have to use some biology and some ecology and combine that with some physics and some engineering. I grew up in a world where media was newspapers and radio and magazines and television, etc. Silos. If you're dyslexic and if you think about the audience, you suddenly wake up one day and say, but that isn't the way the world works. I can integrate things very, very rapidly. When you fly into the south of Sudan um, and drive a Land Rover all night out to a village and there's 100 people dying of this horrible disease, um, that clearly, if you didn't um, act carefully, would kill you also, um, is a, a, a challenge. Um, and to be able to put that together uh, with foreign languages and foreign cultures and deal with that on a, on a survival basis is actually the same process. The key to progress is to discover the beneficial reasons for the differences in cognitive function and to promote their development. One of the things I've learned as a dyslexic is to always start with the audience. What matters is if you're going to inform is them, not you. Another um, important thing about seeing things different ways is to see things at different scales. And so I'm big and you're big and that's how it looks to us. But what about something that's microscopic? Everybody doesn't have to be the same and you don't all have to be good at the same thing in order to be smart or good. 
In fact, in a team, you know, it took hundreds and hundreds of people to do the IBEX mission. You need people with all kinds of different skills and you need them to work together well. And so, you know, I think that there's kind of a diversity of thinking that, that, that is easier for dyslexics to understand why that might be good. Or in other words, to discover what the dyslexic mind is for. I'm a journalist and I tell stories and I love stories and I love narrative. I love to communicate. I didn't read and spell and write. So I started using a camera and I became quite good telling stories with a camera. Instead of looking for how can we fix dyslexic minds, what we should really be looking for is how we can understand, educate, and employ such minds. Because I'm a venture capitalist. And so I invest in entrepreneurs for a living. There's a huge overrepresentation of dyslexics in the entrepreneurial community. Not getting down in the weeds has allowed me to focus on the big picture and really a being enormously curious, what's coming tomorrow? How do you see tomorrow? And how do you then take risks to make it happen now? My biggest frustration now after 18 years is trying to coax my partners along to see something that I see. Now, I know a lot of those people can do a lot of things I can't do. And they certainly did a lot better at school. But as a dyslexic, I, I see things they don't see and I see them a lot faster than they see them. Yeah, of course there are all these problems, but here's what's gonna happen. Here's the, this is where it's gonna go. Our mission statement is to understand, build, and use the essential strengths of the dyslexic mind. If you got it, go with it. Let dyslexia set you free.